All right, I'm here again with my good friend, Rashawn Gordon from Gordon Gun Dogs, and we're covering um, some of the aspects, some of the things people do and people breed for, and um, we're co we covered shows, we covered big field trial dogs. Um, now we're, we're probably going to get into, well, do nab there or shoot to retreat first? Your choice, Randy. All right, now the North America Versatile Hunting Dog Association, started by who? Boto Winterhill. And you know him? Yes, I've met him a few times. Talk to him. Matter of fact, he's probably the one who got you started toward he uh, is, versatile dogs. He is the man who is responsible for my love of German short hair pointers. So how did it start? What happened? That's a good story. Um, I was looking for a dog because I had a Brittany and he didn't have the stamina I needed. So I found out Bodo lived about 10 miles from my house. He's the gun dog guru. So I went to him to ask, what type of dog would you recommend that can hunt chuckers 15 days straight? And he said, get a German short hair pointer. How'd you feel about that? Oh, I was mad because <laughs> I hated German short hairs. I thought they were ugly. I thought they were wild, hyper, uncontrollable. And I told him this and he said, you're looking at field trial lines. He says, don't look at those. Get a versatile bred hunting dog. You'll thank me later. So where'd you go? He tell you where to go? He did. He actually recommended Daisy Schaefer in Roseman, California. I went to her place immediately and talked to her. And once she found out I just wanted a hunting dog, she basically told me to get off her property. She didn't sell the hunters. <laughs> From Heinz Holt Kennel? From Von Heinz Holt Kennel. Yeah. And then... Uh so then what happened? I know you're not easily deterred. <laughs> well, I ended up finding a, a breeder in Lancaster that had a litter, and both he used one of Daisy Sires, Dutchie, and his dog was a daughter of Ebold, or granddaughter of Ebold. So I ended up getting a puppy from him, and that dog changed my life. And Ebold is the only, in case you don't know your German Shorter history, the only German short hair that is both a German K -A -K -S <laughs> of, uh, a German KS, their championship, uh, their top, their top honors, and an American dual champion. So he's a field trial dog, a show champion, uh, both in in Germany and America. And you still have a love this many years. How many years has that been? Thirty. That was in 1986, I believe. Ooh, 86, 86, yeah, thirty something years ago, and you still have a love for the Heinz Holt lines. I and do. Who do you have? I have a dog named Scout. Man, what a nice dog. He is a beautiful dog, and he still carries a lot of those those lines in him today. And Scout, because I know Scout because he used to be my dog, and I still use him, and um, we still breed a lot of dogs to him, and I have Scout's sister, and I got we both have Scout's sons and daughters. We know they're very versatile, but we know their lines. Okay, a lot of Hillhaven Hustler. Hillhaven Hustler goes back to Axel. Um, a lot of the um, Stradivarius stuff, Trekker, which is one of the most titled dogs. Yep. And um, it says who's who of, of breeding of, of the old stuff without maybe just a smidgen of American white field trial stuff. So it's a, he's a very, very, very versatile dog. So we go back to Bodo, who started NABDA which is based a little bit on the German system because he found that Americans weren't breeding versatile dogs. So he wanted to start an organization that, you know, was more in line with the, the Germans. And um, what we're going to do is um, I'm gonna, we're going to stop it there and we're going to go into part two, which is what we know about NAVDA. All right, we're back with Rashawn, and we're in part two of NAVDA. So we covered how Rashawn got into NAVDA, and I didn't, I've never really been into NAVDA, but one time when I was breeding, this is the kind of dogs we breed for. We want a good point, a good back, natural retrieve, level water, a, a team hunter, a loving dog, and a dog that is a versatile hunter. So we hunt fur, rabbits, uh, bobcats, foxes. We want a dog that can track. And so I decided to go to the judging seminar of NAVDA to see if maybe NAVDA was um, doing something in their testing and training that I wasn't doing just as a hunter. And so I spent the weekend with 
you know, some of the top NAVDA people. And I learned in that weekend they, they really weren't. But I also learned that they had a, a pretty good emphasis on water. So they were doing that dog has to be good in water. There's really no tracking to speak of nothing compared to the to the German stuff. And um, finding birds, usually in alfalfa fields or such, pointing it and retrieving it. And what got me thinking the most out of it wasn't even actually from the class, but talking to other NAVDA breeders or talking to NAVDA breeders, I asked them, are you breeding for a natural retrieve in your dog? Because I, I thought it was very important to breed for that. And they said, no, we're not. We're force breaking all of our dogs. We're forcing them to retrieve. Okay, that's fine because you want a bulletproof dog. You want a dog that's going to retrieve every time. So you make them do it. But are you looking for that natural retrieve in the dog, you know, before you force break it? I mean, if you got a dog that loves, loves, loves to retrieve and he retrieves all the time, but you're going to be doing events where they have to be bulletproof, well, then you want to make the next step and force them to do it so they do it every single time and I was finding out that the NAVDA people weren't doing that but you cannot get around the fact that if you're going to do NAVDA your dogs better be good better be good in the water. Uh, Bodo had a split with NAVDA because they wanted to do a registration and they wanted to start the VC, versatile champion they wanted to bring the testing all the way up and Bodo didn't really think that was and I a very good idea and one of his quotes is, is just because a dog has a versatile champion doesn't mean he's going to throw hunting qualities to the dogs which is very telling because you have the top guy in NABDA the guy that started it and has a, a very good understanding of hunting dogs saying look just because your dog can perform and has a lot of drive it can retrieve and it can find the birds doesn't mean that it breaks all the way down to, to a hunting dog. Just like in in the book I read that was written in Germany in the 50s, you don't necessarily hang your hat because a dog had did good in a derby or he did good in the Psalms, you know, and it's got, you know, top, you know, scores. The dog needs needs to hunt. But I would say that from what I've seen if in NABDA what they're producing that they're probably the closest of you getting a versatile dog if from, from a testing. If they did nothing else besides just NABDA and they didn't hunt and they showed or didn't show, it didn't matter, and you call them and they say, oh, we do NABDA and our dogs do very, very well in it, there's a pretty good chance that the dog's going to be a good hunting dog and a good performance dog. But I would still go with someone who actually hunted their dogs. Anything to add on that? No, I, I agree with that. Uh, again, because NABDA is a test that simulates hunting and it's not actual hunting. And a lot of the yeah. testing stuff doesn't actually apply when you're in the field chasing, especially our desert birds. Right. No, nothing compares to that. Right. Yeah, I mean, we've had dogs that were either in the German system or in NABDA or in field trial test and they were perfect in it and I've got them and bought them and brought them home and raised them with the, the pack and have been out with them and some as much as a year who never ever found even one wild gambles quail never found them and never pointed them so um, but then again you know we, we do talk about hunting and there are different levels you know just because a guy says I'm a hunter you better do you better do your research because hunters only hunt a couple weeks out of the year three weeks they may or may not do any water work they may not even know how good their dogs are or aren't so just because he's going to come from a hunting line and a hunter doesn't even that doesn't even mean that you're getting the best dog but NAVDA I, I think my head off to NAVDA because of the water work you know they really do produce really really good water work and knowing that they have to have a really good drive so usually they're kind of a dog that you know can take a lick in and keep on ticking. You can really work with them, and they'll do the retrieves, and they'll come back for more retrieves, and they'll come back for more water work, and they're always ready. They're they're always ready to go. So anyway, that pretty much is a quick look at NAVDA.